So this morning on CNN, this is something to I wanted. You know, a lot of people get this wrong where they talk about like cancel culture and they're trying to change this to accountability culture. Yeah. Um, here's what the term cancel culture. I've talked about this. It's not just when someone says something that turns their audience off. For a perfect example of that, there could be no cancel culture with comedians. In other words, with someone right, like yeah. a Louis C.K., someone mm-hmm. like a Bill Burr. It doesn't matter because the audience comes to see them. Cancel culture is when you have people in disproportional positions of power who try to force someone out of the limelight because they hold an opinion that isn't even necessarily congruent with the rest of the public. That's right. the thing. That's what cancel culture is. It's not accountability when the people at you know CNN, MSNBC are the ones trying to get someone canceled and they happen to be effective or YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Oh, so definitely. this morning on CNN, they were talking about Lin-Manuel Miranda. You know, he's the guy who created Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, and In the Heights, I guess, is this new film adapted. I don't know if it's adapted from a play. So what happened is there was some outrage. And I think this is silly that there weren't enough uh, Afro-Dominicans. Is that the term? Black Dominican-Americans yeah, right. yeah, in this neighborhood. And they're talking about the guy who, by the way, uh, like a Brian Stelter, I was sure was gay until I found out. Like show tunes, <laughs> you hear him That's speak. That's true. No, he's just, he's, he's just who he be. Totally A lot straight. of people think Lin-Manuel Miranda is not what he be, but it do. Yeah. Uh, and they were talking about, in response to the people who were outraged of him not having enough black Dominicans in In the Heights, and this is an actual, a serious discussion that took place <laughs> on America's most trusted news. They say the yeah. free speech is on the line. You're not allowed to say anything, but that's not actually no, that's what's happening. Sure. People are able to speak their mind and say what they believe. The question is, how is the marketplace going to respond? Exactly. How is your audience going to respond? So in the specific case of In the Heights, yeah. people are saying, well, what more do you want, right? You made the founding fathers black and now people are still giving you a hard time. The neighborhood that the Heights is about, which is about half a mile from where I live in Harlem, is majority Afro-Dominican. So imagine making yeah. a movie about Greenwich, Connecticut with no white actors. Yeah. People would say, make that make sense. Or uh, making a play of the Founding Fathers with no white actors. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, or, <laughs> it's, 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 he did. Right. He made a play with the Founding yeah. Fathers black, and then not enough black people in a Dominican neighborhood. It'd be like having a play that should be about yeah. white people historically with uh, no white people. Do, Cell phone much? <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, I'd love to see the, hear the phone call. Yeah, I have a hot script, Hollywood. It's all white people in Connecticut. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Hello? Exactly. Sounds yeah. very interesting. No, there's no there's no uh, lesbian couple adopting a child. Hello? 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 I'll have Hello? to call you back. <laughs> I, they keep hanging up. Have you seen Bridgerton? Les Hyper on line 12. Yeah, Bridgerton has a black queen. Beauty and the Beast has black people yep. in positions of power at a time when that didn't happen in England. And by the way, I don't really care. I mean, I think the rapping is Rants. pretty crappy. Yeah. But then again, when they're, you know, their standard bearers, Takashi 6 9 I don't really think this generation yeah. knows a whole lot about hip-hop. I just, I, I couldn't believe this. I watched this live. I'm so glad we added this to the show this morning because I watched we were, it. Like, you were watching it live while I was watching it live? Yes. We, it's oh, like Kevin McAllister oh, and his mom looking together. at the Christmas tree. Yeah, pretty much. Except but with hate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> both of us hate this. And Essie Cup's like, oh, of course. Yeah, that's like totally the strong challenger. Ending. Like, okay, fine. Here, prove my point for me. One of you say something controversial. Go. One of you, yeah. Not one of you is going to say anything remotely controversial. And it's not just, you made a great point. It's gatekeepers. Yeah. It's people saying you can't say this, not an audience, not advertisers. It's it's also disproportionate on your opinion. You can say horrific things if you're a Democrat. Really terrible things about Republicans. Well, hold on. This isn't that terrible, but I'm going to show you the next. This is, again, where we're talking about appeasing or trying to apologize to the mob. Now, I've always said your words don't define you. Your actions define you. And generally speaking, your words, the way you speak, the way you carry yourself, is a reflection of your character, as are your actions. They should be relatively in line with each other. However, we see this on CNN. And SC Cup was sort of like the, the the white Anna Navarro, you know, was like, I was, a, she's always like, I was a Republican on what? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing ever. But take my word, I have credibility. I don't like Donald Trump. And I was a Republican. Really? What did you? I don't know. So anyway, she's the white equivalent where she just claims she was a Republican, dines yeah. on that for years. And they actually uh, show you that it doesn't matter what you do. If you've said naughty words, but they'll forgive violent, felonious actions. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> if you're of the right political persuasion or skin color. This next clip, yeah. I'll tell you, Mel Gibson, Michael Vick, blew my mind, but not really. 
Yeah. So the question is, who is your audience, and are you smart enough to know and figure that out? So who is Mel Gibson's audience? Well, who's everyone? Who's Braveheart, I'm bitch. Certainly not. <laughs> no, neither. <laughs> okay. So there's Mad a question Max, come about on. when have people mm -hmm. done enough to Lethal redeem weapon. themselves, and I think that's a very real question: is when is somebody worthy of forgiveness? You take someone, for example, like Michael Vick, did something terrible, was convicted, paid the the cost for that, served his time, and then came out and did a tremendous amount of work in supporting animal rights. And when you speak to people in those communities, they say, "No, we." <laughs> I feel like this was genuine. He really is very remorseful for what he did. Okay, okay. So here's the deal. Mel Gibson said bad words while drunk. Yeah. No one's saying he didn't say bad things while drunk. Most hilarious voicemails ever recorded. Very funny. He called the cop sugar tits who was a guy. How is that not hysterical? But I understand Holocaust denial, bad. I get yes, it. I'm not yeah. absolving him of that. However, bad words while drunk, they are saying is more impermissible than a man who drowned and electrocuted dogs alive. Wow. Come on. Come on. And think about that for a second. Oh, he can. Why do you think Michael Vick can be forgiven? And they try to pull the whole, who watches Mel Gibson? Um, like everyone, okay? Yeah. He has done some of the biggest films of all time. It doesn't mean I even love them all. Right. But he is a monumentally successful filmmaker. You guys wanted him out. He's not. You guys, for some reason, allowed Michael Vick to be back in the good graces. I don't, un I don't know if you agree yeah. with this. What do you think is worse? Anti-Semitic tirades when uh, calling drunkenly your gold-digging girlfriend and offering her one more chance, mind you. Or... <laughs> one more chance. Or... Kill, drowning, electrocuting, strangling dogs alive who want nothing more than to be loyal to you. And you let yeah. me. And by the way, Michael Vick didn't walk up to the police station and say, officers, you know, <laughs> like he didn't come in and say, I am doing yeah. this, please forgive me. He said, oh crap, I got caught. Now I need to do something to rehab my image. Now he may be genuine it's court now. court-ordered redemption, yeah. Court -ordered, exactly, so that it makes it, it makes a difference. You didn't turn yourself in. Right. You actually got caught and we're like, oh crap, I'm really sorry. Yeah, you're sorry I mean, you got caught. Look at I it, think redemption on. is redemption. As horrible as that is, you're allowed to change your life. Mm -hmm. Right. I really do think that. I agree, and I but think, and, and same with Mel Gibson. I also think, I don't know what work, though, has Michael Vick been doing with all these yeah. animal... He threw like, some uh, he threw some spray paint on people coming out of uh, TJ Maxx and fur coats. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, he yeah. he volunteered at a kill shelter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at that point, like, I'm going to do it anyway. Might as well get paid. Yeah. I got the experiment. Ah! Uh, come on, man. Oh, man. Community no, service. I do this all the time. Ass. <laughs> no, you're totally right, Dave. Like you can be redeemed. I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that it's th that this is the pattern for the left. It's somebody who gets caught. Like Jimmy Kimmel didn't go in and say, "Guys, look, I've been doing blackface for a long time, and I'm really sorry about it." Somebody put the video back out yeah. there, and he's like, "Oh crap, I have to respond to this." Turn that is a different situation. You can right. totally respond and say, "I'm sorry," and mean it. I I definitely believe that. Yeah. But it's not like these people went out there and did it on their own accord, saying, "Gosh, I just I, really I just think my I life just think it's bad. It's very yes, clear that the yeah. left will forgive violent action. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think if a do you think if a white male conservative was burning dogs alive, electrocuting dogs alive? Sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to be hyperbolic. Do you think that uh, they would be forgiven? Maybe cats. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> terrible. I'm kidding. I love animals. Uh, no, I, I like know. animals more than course. people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you really want to, ask who I'm mad about, I, I still enjoy a good Mel Gibson movie. In other words, they would sooner Bloodfather. They would yeah. sooner forgive the man who kills his dog than the one who names his dog Himmler. What? Mel and you shouldn't do either, to yeah, be clear. Those are both, those are bad. So stupid. I learned that with little Mr. Goebbels. I learned <laughs> Had my <to> lesson. <laughs> Mel Gibson is insane, though, and that's why I enjoy him. Yes. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.